Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get into it with our guests here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. We have Diana Franck on the podcast. She's coming to us all the way from Indiana, where, I mean, I hope the weather's a little bit better than it is here, although it is unseasonably warm today. She's an NBC bikini wellness competitor, and she's on here to share her health and fitness journey with us. But most importantly, she is our current guest. Diana, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Well, I got to ask, first of all, because I love to torture myself, what is the weather like in Indiana today? Um, Actually, it's not bad. It's like mid-40s today after last week and having a lot of snow. It's definitely a lot better. I just moved back here from Florida, so it's definitely a shock, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, this last week was really, really tough. I'm, I mean, my car literally froze three times where I couldn't even start it because it was like negative 30 and the gas just froze. So yeah, it was an, it was definitely an interesting week, but I don't want to get too much into that because we'll lose half of our viewers because they'll be like, oh, this is just depressing. I don't want to listen to this anymore. So <laughs> before that happens, why don't you first off give us your backstory on what really inspired and motivated you to get in shape and how that led to where you're currently at right now in bodybuilding? Um, so when I was younger, I've always played sports. I was really big into softball. I played for like eight or nine years. Decided that's not what I wanted to do anymore. Um, and then after that, I kind of like fell off, didn't really do a whole lot with uh, fitness or sports or anything. Um, and then fast forward to 2014, 2015, that's when I joined the military. And that inspired me again to get back into actually lifting because with all of our physical fitness training and stuff like that, it was just something that I obviously had to do. I was required to do it. So that's where I kind of like fell in love with with the weights and building again. So that's where everything kind of started. After that, um, I did get pregnant with my third child and um, had her. I have a best friend that also competes in bikini and now wellness. She just transferred to the wellness division. So after I had my third child, that's when I decided, you know what, I'm going to compete. I'm going to do something. I want something that's going to challenge myself a little bit more. So that's what I did. I competed on her first birthday, which was April 2019. Um, that was my first show ever. I prepped for a good eight or nine months once I was cleared by the doctor to go ahead and work out. That's when I started, and it's just been been history since then. I did another show a couple months after, which was also a bikini show up here in Indiana. And then I took a little bit of time off just to kind of focus on my physique and what I wanted to do and what was going to benefit me as far as whether I wanted to do, uh, if I wanted to keep doing bikini or if I wanted to step up to wellness just because of how, how my body is, um, genetically. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So this show that I'm going to be doing, um, in May, May 8th, I'm going to be doing bikini and wellness just to kind of see where I fall as far as physique wise. That's awesome. Well, I got to say, first of all, thank you for your service too. I mean, we have a lot of military people that come on the podcast too, and that's, that is just great. What branch did you join? Army. Oh, yep. Yep. That's, that's awesome. So yeah, that, that's great. And I mean, when you're talking about, you know, getting in shape for the army too, I mean, it's a lot of, you know, body weight exercises. Do you think that that helped you overall in your transition into bodybuilding? Because just to have that background in that, I think, because like we've talked to people that are like in gymnastics and stuff, and that's a whole different advantage too. But do you think that that advantage that maybe the military gave you just from be, being the fact that you have to be very physical to be in the military, do you think that that helped you when you started to transition into bodybuilding? Um, yes and no. Um, yes. The oh, we got a cat alert, everyone. <laughs> yeah. This is Panda. She likes to interrupt all my phone conversation. Hey, 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 not a problem at all. I love animals. So but, that's totally fine. <laughs> um, yes and no. Yes, because it did help with a lot of the beginning stages of lifting. Um, because I already had a good foundation as far as like endurance and stamina. Um, my only issue was my mind and muscle connection. As far as actually lifting, that's where I had a lot of issues when I first started, um, and as well as just different different workouts and different variations. Because once you get your body gets so acclimated to certain workouts, so I started getting used to the push ups and the running and everything else. So it was definitely it was definitely different, but also the same in a way. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not going to develop really a mind to muscle connection when you're doing push ups and running to those toes. Right. Those aren't really the yeah. exercises that you're really going to know, be able to feel it, especially when you get so used to it that, I mean, it's just like, it's just like breathing basically. So yeah, that's that. I, I, I can imagine that that was one thing. And I mean, one thing that I also love to state is that, you know, if you're to walk into a gym with a hundred people, there's a hundred different ways as to how those people got into shape, whether it comes down to their diet, their nutrition, how many reps they do, what exercises they do. So many little things add up to that overall package that people end up seeing. What was that experience like for you sort of figuring out what works best for you? Because it's so much trial and error. And if you were to walk up to someone and say, you know, like, Hey, what'd you train for this body part? It looks amazing. What works best for them? 99% of the time isn't going to work as good for you. Exactly. So that, that whole first, um, like, year that I, um, that I prepped for that first show, that was, that was really my, my whole like trial and error period as to what was going to work for me. And I tried to educate myself as much as possible. I did go ahead and get, um, my certification through NASM. And that was, that was mainly, it wasn't even because I wanted to be a personal trainer per se. It was mainly because I wanted to be more educated on what I was doing as far as nutrition and workouts and things like that. Um, I would say that with going to the gym constantly, watching other people, um, that kind of helped me as well. I would honestly, any, any, like the best advice that I could give to somebody that is like just starting out is to not compare yourself to other people, especially on Instagram or try the Instagram workouts. Cause like you said, what's going to work for one person isn't going to work for somebody else. And people just get in this mindset that, oh, well, if he or she did 15 reps per set, then that's going to work for me. Like, no, that, that might not be it. You may have, you may have to drop set your stuff for a while. You may have to, you know what I mean? Just figure different things out that are going to work for you. Um, for me personally, I found out that I needed more upper body days than I did lower body days. Even though when I first started out, I had a split that pretty much was a, a cookie cutter plan, if that makes sense. So I had to slowly figure out what was going to work for my body type and what was going to get me to the level that I wanted to be at for myself. I had to dial in on my nutrition and figure out what was going to work for my body rather than what's working for everybody else's bodies. So it's definitely, it's definitely a process. It's something that you have to be very, very patient with. You can't rush into it. Nothing's obviously going to happen overnight. Like everybody thinks that it's going to, there's no magical pill. There's no magic food that you're going to eat. That's going to get you to where you need to be. You have to put the work in no matter what. So I, unfortunately that is the case. I'm waiting patiently for that magic pill to get invented, but you know, it hasn't, hasn't come up yet. So, you know, un unfortunately that is definitely the case, but I mean, I love to talk genetics on this podcast because so many people that are on Instagram and other social media sites, I hear this all the time and I want to strangle them as, you know, Oh my God, I want his arms. I want her back. I want their abs. It's just like, you can only be the best version of yourself. You don't know how did that person got to the way that they are right now. You don't know, you know, they're seeing, and let's be honest, there's some genetic freaks out there where they can work out, you know, like once a month and they still look absolutely shredded. I've had two of them on this podcast and it's just like, screw yeah. you. I, I hate you more than life itself. But on top of that, everyone always has that one body part when they first get started working out that really, really takes off and they don't have to train as much. And then everyone has that one body part that just lags behind it. They have to train to oblivion once they get started. What were those body parts for you? Um, for me, like I said, it was, it was upper body. So upper body was one of my main weaknesses. Like pull-ups were out of the question. Like I was at negative one pull-ups. <laughs> it was, it was horrible. It was horrendous. So upper body was definitely hard for me. Lower body was easier. Um, and I think that has to do with all of the running that I did with the military and as well as playing softball, it's definitely more of a, a running sport. Um, so I feel like that I ha I have an advantage lower body wise. And I feel like a lot of women do just because of the way that we're made up. But um, as far as size and uh, muscle mass, definitely lower body for me. When I was competing in bikini, um, that's where it was a little hard for me because I would have to keep my leg size down. So it got to a point where I was I was hardly training legs and then I would come in not as conditioned as I wanted to be because if I was to train my legs more, I'm going to come in too big in size. So 
So that's why I'm so thankful for the wellness division and that they <laughs> finally rolled something out for people that can grow their legs because it's, it's a struggle for sure. So yeah, definitely upper body was upper body is definitely a weakness. <laughs> well, I mean, abs- I mean, for me, it's the exact opposite where I'm six, three. So my upper body and my back was the one thing that really, really took off for me. And then my legs and my lower body are just absolutely shot where I could inject pure muscle into my legs and they wouldn't gain an ounce. I mean, calves don't even get me started on that. That's the one where you're either born with them or you're born without them. It- it's just yeah. ridiculous. But I mean, I love bringing that up because, you know, it just shows that, you know, everybody's body is different. And, you know, just cause you work out just like someone else, like if Dwayne, the rock Johnson posts his workout routine, a lot of people just believe, Oh, if I do the same exact thing he's doing, I'm going to end up looking like him. And it's like, good luck. And again, if that does happen to you, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a follow and I'll let you train me. But on top of that too, I mean, the number one myth that I love to bust on this podcast, you know, it's gotten better, you know, the last five years due to Instagram is that so many women still have that fear that, you know, if they were to walk into a gym and, you know, pick up one weight, they're going to put on 50 pounds of muscle overnight. And first of all, if that does happen to you, you know, give me a call. Cause I'll spend my entire life savings to train with you and you'll be the first ever trillionaire. But I mean, what was, did you ever have that fear when you were getting started? And even if you didn't, I mean, I bet you still hear that all the time. How do you like to respond to that? Um, personally for me, I didn't have that fear only because bigger is better. So (laughs) definitely all about packing on size. Um, I, I don't, I don't really under, like for me personally, just because I never went through that, I don't really understand like the the reasoning as to why someone thinks that if you were to pick up weights that you're just going to be big and bulky, like the people that are bigger have worked their way up to that point. Like we're talking years and years of work. Like you're not going to get there overnight. Like it's like we said, it's not an overnight process. Like there's a lot that goes into it that people don't know, which is, which is a little bit, it is a little bit frustrating because we do put a lot of work in. So when I see people say that, or when I see people say, oh, well, they, they use all these supplements or they use this or they use that. And that's why they are where they are. It's like, no, there's a lot that goes into it. It's a, it's, it's a mind game for sure. And it's definitely, it's definitely about discipline and where, where you want to be. Like, how bad do you want it? You know? Yeah. Supplements only take you so far. I mean, you still got to put the work in. I mean, it's, it's, that's one thing that needs to really be said, you know, as well. But one thing that I think impacts women so much more positively than men when it comes to this lifestyle is just that confidence boost that working out gives you. We have heard hundreds of stories on this podcast of women who have, you know, either made life changing decisions or it's, it's just been one thing that's, you know, really helped them, you know, adjust and really, you know, make changes in their lives. But Working out, I mean, that's the one positive thing that you're going to get from a really, you know, healthy and fit lifestyle is just that confidence boost. And how have you taken that confidence boost and used it to impact your life in a positive way? Um, honestly, I I love everything about it from the day that I started working out and seeing different changes in my body and what I could do for myself just by being disciplined and applying the right technique. Like it was just mind blowing to me, and I've just taken that to different levels as far as just like educating other, other moms. Like I have other moms that I talk to that are wanting to get in shape. Like it's not, it's not hard. It's really not hard. You just have to be able to be willing to do the work. But as far as like my, my confidence with it, I, I have found, I, I found more of myself with, with bodybuilding and being in this industry and like surrounding myself with people that are doing the same things that I am doing. It's just given me a whole sense of, of purpose really is, is what I feel like if I wouldn't, if I wouldn't have gotten into bodybuilding and competing, like I honestly don't know. I couldn't tell you what I would be, what I would be doing today. Like I have, I have no idea because it definitely changed my life after that first show. I was like, this is what I want to do. And I, haven't looked back since then. <laughs> that That's amazing. And I mean, another aspect about bodybuilding that people just don't seem to understand is preps because 95% of the general public wouldn't be able to get into the amount of shape that's necessary to get on a prep. And I mean, once you're on a prep, everything just becomes so scientific with your nutrition, with your sleep, with your workouts. I mean, you just have to really just switch it, have a switch in your brain that really just goes off. And what is that like for you the moment that you enter a prep and just realize, hey, you know, things are going to get a lot harder and I need a totally different mindset for this? Um, for me, so I'm currently in prep right now and I have 10 weeks left. So my, for my off seasons, I am a little bit more relaxed, but I still eat relatively healthy. Like I, I try to stay mainly on my diet. I still have, um, I'll have like my, 
I hate calling them this like cheat meals or whatever, but I, I only hate calling them that because then it just relates to like a bad relationship with food. And I hate that. So, uh, I, I, I go off my plan a little bit every, every now and then everybody's going to, it, it is what it is. But once it comes to, once it comes to prep, once I, once I start, once I have a start date, it's just an automatic thing. Like I know, like things need to, food needs to be prepped. Things need to be laid out. I get everything ready for like my whole, my whole month. Everything gets written down, scheduled, even, even my sleep will get scheduled out sometimes just because I know that I need certain, certain amount of, of hours and workouts get like perfectly scheduled out as, as much as possible. I mean, sometimes things happen. I have kids, so sometimes I can't make it to the gym. And then that's when, that's when you gotta, gotta do what you have to do, work out at home. So Thank God for COVID in a way, because it made me buy a lot of home equipment that I wouldn't have. <laughs> hey, she said it, not me, everyone. But no, I, I, yeah. no I'm just kidding. But <laughs> but speaking of kids, I mean, what has your friends and family's reaction been like when you announced to them that you want to be a bodybuilder? Because it's not something that people hear often. of. So my my parents were actually excited. Like my mom, my mom loves it. Like she's she's all for it. Um, the rest of the family, they're kind of. I mean, they're, they're supportive about it, but it is something that they didn't really, that they didn't really see happening. I mean, I've had, I've had comments from some family members, especially when I'm in prep that obviously don't understand like what, what the whole process is that have told me you're, you're too big or you're too skinny or you're too thin. Like something's wrong with you. Like you, you know what I mean? They just think that it's like a mental issue that I have some kind of like, I possibly have an eating disorder or there's something else going on. And I take, I, I try to at least take the the most healthy approach to things because yes, bodybuilding can get unhealthy if you choose to go that way, but you don't have to choose to go that way. There's, there's healthier ways of, of doing it and getting, getting things accomplished that people don't, that people don't realize because like they want the quick fix. They want a quick way to do it. The quickest way to do it is not going to be the healthiest way to do it. And that's, that's where you're, you're going to fall out and you're going to wonder why. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, yeah, especially with, you know, everything that can go on in this lifestyle. Yeah, there's there's a way to do it. And then there's a way not to do it. And I think a lot of mm-hmm. people, you know, just they find out the hard way sometimes where they find out, you know, through trial and error, which I mean, I should rename this podcast to trial and error, because you know, that's the whole entire thing of this lifestyle. But the most interesting thing that I was, you know, I was aware of it. But you know, I didn't just realize how important it was in this lifestyle is posing would it never gets it in a million mm-hmm. years that that is, you know, the hardest thing for so many of these competitors. It's harder than you're working out. It's harder than your nutrition. But I like to compare it now to being a perfect driver where you can be a great driver. You can never be a perfect driver. You can be a great poser. You can never be a perfect poser. It's always ever evolving. What is your relationship with posing been like? Um, so bikini posing, I've, I've got that down. I'm good with that. Um, wellness posing, it's, it's completely the opposite. So they are, instead of turning to your right, it's, it's left turns. So, and I'm not left-handed. So the, the left turn thing has me, has me a little, a little messed up right now. Um, but I agree. Posing is definitely a really big part of it because you can look amazing and hit all your angles in any picture and any video you want to, but you get on stage and if your posing isn't on point, you might lose that show because you didn't, you didn't tweak yourself the right way when, when you could have. So it's definitely, it's definitely something that's very, very important that people, I feel like people should take more time on and schedule out time to pose. You should be put, if you, if you're looking at doing a show and you're in a prep, you should be posing every day every day. Not only is it going to help you on stage, it's also going to help you with your muscle growth in general, just because you're, if, if you're constantly being flexed and you're in a pose position for a while, you're going to have to control your breathing. So it just, it, it makes everything a lot easier. Just pose every day. <laughs> That's that. And I mean, uh, yeah. And I cringe all the times that I've heard stories of people were just like, Oh yeah, I wait until like three or four weeks out to finally like start posing. And it's like, Good luck with that. And, you know, again, you, you get, sometimes got to learn the hard way. But the thing that I find so interesting about the bikini division is that, I mean, just for that division alone, you have to have your own sort of sass. You have to have your own side of sort of flair that, I mean, it's hard to learn that. You either, you're either you either kind of born with it or you're born without. But did you always sort of naturally think that you had that sass and that flair that you need for bikini? Or was it something that you had to learn like slowly over time? Uh, no, I, I, I definitely had it. <laughs> so because uh, when I was younger, I was also... I was also a dancer. I was into dance a lot. So 
that that part wasn't really an issue for me as far as being confident on stage and being able to pose and being able to portray a certain way. Um, it, it was just, it was the posing in general. It was the insecurity of knowing if I was hitting the pose right because I, you can't see yourself when you're on stage. You know what I mean? So you have to go out there and be the most confident, even if, even if your pose looks like trash, like if you go out there and you're confident, you're going to look better than what you would if you're going out there and you are clearly nervous and you think that something is wrong. If you're, if you're not confident in this sport, you, you might as well forget it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. That, yeah, that is, you know, half the battle right there is just that confidence. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have it, you know, just pretend, I mean, fake it till you yeah, make it. That's, fake, that's, yeah, exactly. Fake it till yep, you make it. Cause but, yeah. Yep. That is, that means so much in, in bodybuilding and as in life as well. But when you're on that stage, I mean, what is that feeling like for you when you finally get to show off all those months upon months of hard work that you've done? And, you know, you finally get to, you know, just throw it all out there because I mean, prep is hard enough as it is, but when that finally all pays off at the end, what is that feeling like for you walking on that stage? So right before, right before I walk on stage, it's definitely, I, I you definitely get nervous you're, you're nervous. I mean, you're sweaty, you're disgusting. Like you, you just, you want to get out there but, and get it over with. But at the same time, you want it to like not happen at all. <laughs> like I, you, you have that fear, like, I'm not ready. Like this doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. You're looking at everybody backstage and it just, it's, it's very overwhelming. But once you're out there and the lights are on you, you can't really see anybody out there because all the lights are so bright anyways. It's more it's more relaxing and rewarding knowing like, okay, I'm finally here. Like, this is it. I have to show off my, my best package, what I brought and I have to do it. I have to do it for me. I'm not here to show the girl next to me that my, my legs look better. Like I'm here to show myself that I improved from last season or that I've, I've made it to my goal. That's what it's about. Don't get on stage and think, okay, I'm just here because I want to win. Yeah. Everybody's there because they want to win, but don't, don't go into it with that mindset. Like I'm here because I want to win and I'm going to win and I look better than everybody or whatever, because you're, you're, you're going to be let down. You may, you may look great, but you're going to be, you're going to be let down. But for me personally, it's definitely, it's, it's exciting for me. It's, it's relaxing once you're on stage. I, I am definitely more relaxed and more in my, in my element. Once I'm on stage, the music is on, the lights are on. You're just, there's a different kind of vibe and it's, it's, it's nice. I enjoy it. And when you're on stage, does time seem to slow down or does it seem to speed up or is it sort of a mixture? It's sort of a mixture. So more of when, when I go out to actually pose, I think that is the fastest part. You go out there and you're posing and it's so quick. You, you get off stage and you're like, what just happened? Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm done. That's it. Like, that's all I had to do. It's, it's crazy to feel like you're prepping for this whole entire, this whole entire time just to be on stage for what a, a max of like, we're talking a max of maybe 30 minutes and that's both like prejudging and finals. Like, so it's, it's definitely, it's stressful, but it's, it's, it's rewarding. I, I love it. Yeah, I mean, I've always made the comparison that, you know, for baseball, yeah, I'd go out on the mound, you know, 20 times a year and, you know, three hours each time, basically. And, you know, yeah, like you said, you guys are on stage for sometimes even only like a minute at most, you know, yeah. and, you, and you train 10 times as hard as I would ever train. So, I mean, if that doesn't make you gain more respect for what these competitors do, you know, I don't know what does. But on top of this, I mean, another myth that I love to bust is that, you know, so many people don't understand that that look that you present on stage is not a sustainable look. You're not going to look that way 365 days out of the year. And that's, I think a lot of people watch shows like Biggest Loser where, you know, people go on and, you know, they lose a couple hundred pounds and some of them are able to keep off the weight and people just look at that. And then they just assume that people who compete, you know, like, oh, they work out even harder than those people. They should be able to, you know, maintain that look year round, but they don't realize, you know, you manipulate your diet, you manipulate your carbs, your water, everything really that goes into this. But what was that like for you when you first realized that, you know, hey, this body that I presented on stage, you know, I am going to have to put on weight and it's going to get harder for me. What has that been like for you? And then also, has it gotten easier for you to accept that as your career has gone on? Yes. So my with my first show, obviously, that that was like the leanest I had ever been. Like, I loved my look um, coming out of that show and going into an off season, my first off season. That was rough. 
like you, you definitely have some, some body image issues. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, so it was, it was hard. That first off season was definitely hard. Um, I went through a point where I was doing more cardio than what I should have been doing because I felt like I was just gaining too much fat. I had an issue with the scale. I had an issue with remembering that muscle has a different volume than fat. And it just, it's, it's something that you have to constantly remind yourself, this is what needs to happen for you to grow. You can't, you can't constantly be in a deficit. You can't constantly be training the way that you're training for a show. Like it's, it's not healthy. Like you said, it's not, it's not sustainable. Like you can't, you can't do that. And anybody that sees pictures and things like that on Instagram of people that are ripped 24 seven, some people are, yeah. Some people do that, and they and they keep it that way, and they just want to stay lean. Year and their careers and last like probably about a third of what they normally should. It, exactly. So, I mean, if that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. Um, but people look at it and they think that that's just what people look like all year round. Like, secret is these people are taking numerous pictures while they're in a prep or while they're at their leanest, and they're posting them throughout the year, or throughout the month, like. That picture that you're seeing today could have been taken two months ago. No one knows, you know? So like I said, just don't, don't base your, your body in what you want to do off of somebody you see on social media. Like, yes, you can have body goals and be like, I want to look like so-and-so. That's fine. You're not going to look exactly like them. No one is because they're them and you're you. Um, that, but it, and it's fine to have goals, but just realize that you're, your in your end point is going to be different. Yep. No. Yeah. And yeah, again, that sort of goes with, you know, the, the comparing yourself to others where, I mean, this is not something that, you know, you're ever going to really be able to successfully really compare yourself to others, especially in the off season. But being that you're a mom of three and I mean, that's a full-time job in and of itself. What sort of time balance do you have to have in order to, you know, still have this lifestyle? Because especially for moms, I mean, your time schedule needs to be almost down pat in order to, you know, get all of the stuff that you need to do in a day. And then when you add on bodybuilding to that, I mean, it becomes almost impossible. Yeah. So that consists of super early mornings and really late nights. <laughs> super early mornings. We're talking 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Wake up, uh, shower, get ready, kids ready, dropped off. And this is with breakfast I, that's why um breakfast is for me is normally a protein shake in the morning or i just do egg whites and like a turkey sausage just because it's something quick that i can make so 4 30 wake up well 3 3 30 4 30 get all get get kids ready get myself ready um drop them off straight to the gym afterwards which is either cardio or lifting it just kind of depends on the day um, midday is when I do my work. So a certain work for clients and things like that. I have other things that I do throughout the day. Um, and then I pick, I pick them up around, well, the youngest, no later than like five or five thirty, And then that's when we get everybody home. And then I'm cooking my food. I'm making their food on top of that. And then we've got baths and bedtime and then I'm up still doing client work still programming my stuff like my own stuff for the next week my own food and everything so it it's it's a lot it's stressful it definitely is stressful and that's one thing that you need to not be during prep is stressed out <laughs> so I try to keep my stress levels to a minimum but sometimes it gets the best of me no offense but that sounds horrible I mean, I, oh, yeah. just, oh, just hearing that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is, well, and I mean, the most important thing in this lifestyle is sleep. I don't care what anyone says. And, you know, how are you able to, you know, function with that little amount of sleep? Because especially being on prep, I mean, you need more sleep than ever. And I mean, sleep is the most important thing, but how are you able to function? Are you just a caffeine addict or how are you able to get through that? Power naps. <laughs> I'm telling you, power naps are life. Like 25, 30 minute naps. Like if I can, if I can get them in, I'm getting them in. And then sleep. Sleep is sleep is a struggle. Uh, when I first moved back here, um, it was rough. Then I mean, I couldn't get to bed until we're talking no later than like two thirty in the morning. So it 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 got it got to a point where I could tell that I was just exhausted. And in the in the first half of my prep, I actually had a week where I just didn't go to the gym at all, um, just because I knew that I wasn't performing as, as well as I should be because I, I had lack of sleep. I was tired. I was exhausted. I was mentally, I was physically, I was emotionally just exhausted. 
So I just needed to back off of, of everything. Sometimes you have to do that and that's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Like you're not, you're not going to gain weight in one day and you're not going to lose it in one day. So <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to take a break if you have to take a break. Um, now my sleep schedule is a little bit better. Um, I, I get to bed, I would say probably anywhere between midnight and one and then waking up at no later than four thirty. sometimes a little bit later. Yeah. Depending on how I can work it out. Yeah. I got it. I got to stay busy. And like I said, just power naps. See, but I'm one of those people where I can, I'm one of those people where I can never nap. I'm just that hyperactive once I get up where it's like, good luck. My, a nap for me is like closing my eyes for half an hour, not falling asleep, but just like closing my eyes really. And not, not, I mean, I'm still aware of everything that's around me, but it's just, yeah, just having, just, just sort of focusing on that. But yeah, that's. I could not fun. I mean, I'm one of those people where if I get one night of rough sleep, you know, I can't really work out really that much or do anything. So I could, yeah, I, I just definitely can't imagine that. But you mentioned cardio and that is my trigger word. I mean, I hate it more than life itself. I mean, yep. when I say cardio, I'm talking about like actually running. I mean, I, I could walk, you know, on a treadmill for a thousand miles a day, basically. And, you know, I'd be totally fine. But what is your relationship with cardio like? Because unfortunately, when you get into bodybuilding, cardio is one thing that you do a lot of. And most of the time, especially during your prep, I mean, you're going to be on that treadmill more than you are basically working out. But so what has that been like for you dealing with just all this cardio? And, you know, it's just a lot of, you know, time. if you you have to be focused on something else, really, when you're doing cardio, because if you have, let your mind wander, I mean, it goes to weird places. If you're just walking on a treadmill for like an hour and you don't have anything to really focus yourself on. Yeah. Or yeah. Or five minutes feels like an hour because <laughs> that's that's how it is for me um, as far as cardio. So in off season, um, I have I have like limited cardio. I, I only do cardio like twice a week, like 30 to 45 minutes. Um so off season really isn't bad because that's where I want to pack on most of my size. So I'm really not trying to keep a whole lot down. Um, but as, as far as prep, I just, I just increased my cardio this past week. So we're, we're doing a lot, a lot of cardio right now. I've got, uh, so Mondays I have, uh, fasted in the morning and then I have, uh, Tuesday through Thursday is, well, so Tuesday is about 20, 25 minutes of cardio. And then the rest of the week is 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, uh, that is that again, you know, that just adds more to like, how, how do these people get through it? But yeah, it's just, it, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned mind to muscle connection in the beginning and how long into your journey before you think you really developed that mind to muscle connection? Cause that's the one thing that really separates, I think a lot of competitors from just the general public is, you know, being able to develop that mind to muscle connection. And the fact that, I mean, if you develop it for one body part, you still got to develop it for the rest of your body. I mean, it's all individualized. Mm-hmm. So let's say you develop it for your shoulders. Doesn't mean you're going to have it for your legs too. So how long do you think it took you to, before you develop that overall sort of mind to muscle connection that really helped you? Ooh, it took me a couple of years. Um, so when I first started, it wasn't, I, I focused more on my, on my movements, I would say on being, being able to move weight a certain way. Um, and then after I got that down, I started focusing more on form. How am I moving the weight efficiently? And am I moving it in a way that's going to help a certain body part? Um, and then it got into, I, th- I think my legs were the first that it really clicked as far as mind and muscle connection because I can, it, I, legs are just easier. I can focus a little bit more on certain parts where I lacked again was upper body as far as, um, shoulders, shoulders were a really hard one for me because I had an issue a lot with my upper back and my traps taking over instead of shoulders, because I couldn't. I couldn't focus on certain parts of my shoulders. It was just all about moving weight up and not, you know what I mean? Not really like thinking. So that one was a hard one for me. Finally got that. Once I corrected my form, did a little, did a little tweaking of my program. I finally figured that out. The last one that got figured out was lats. Lats are hard. Lats are a hard one to activate for sure. If you're not in the correct position, if you're not, if you're not, contracting a certain way it's it's not going to hit so i definitely think the the part that's grown a lot more on me would probably be my back and my shoulder area compared to a couple of years ago because i did finally get that that connection that click and it takes a while it really does if you're not if you're not focusing on that and you're just focusing on on moving the weight um you're not you're not going to see your max potential of growth as if you as if you have that mind and muscle connection to where you know what you're moving, what's being worked, 
and what's going to get you what's going to get you to where you want to be yeah that's and again yeah it just it takes a lot of time and some people you know they struggle so much with it and you know it just it's one of those things where eventually you're going to figure it out and eventually you're just going to have that one day where you're just like oh I, I can really feel it and i mean that is just a huge difference maker especially in this in this lifestyle but yeah, the one thing that I love to talk about too is that you know this is so much more of a mental journey than it is a physical journey. But mm-hmm. people are only going to recognize the physical changes really because they'll come up to you and you say, you know, Diana, you look amazing. What have you done? But they don't realize that that mental transformation that has changed too, which is a hundred times more important because you know, mm-hmm. let's be honest, those days when you wake up not feeling like you want to work out or just those other struggles that you go through. I mean, that mental is stuff is going to help you out even more. But what has this journey been like for you mentally? Um, mentally mentally it's been hard it's uh, and i'm i'm pretty sure it's hard for for everybody that does this um you you get to points where you're not motivated i've had numerous people ask me how do you stay motivated uh, the answer is i don't i don't stay motivated like i don't wake up every day and say yay i'm going to work out today or i'm going to kill my workout like that's not what happened i just had a day what monday and i i had shoulders monday and i walked in there and I was like, okay, I'm going to kill my workout today, picked up weights. And I was there for 10 minutes. And I was like, I already want to leave. Like, I don't want to be here, but you, you push through it anyways, even if it's not your best workout, you're still doing it. You still have to get it done. Um, other parts of it mentally that have been hard is just really trying to focus more on myself and my goals, because even though I keep like harnessing on like, don't look at other people. You're going to look at other people. You're going to, it's It's just going to happen. Yeah. It's just going to happen. So I, I find myself that sometimes that I even get in my own head and I'm like, Oh, like I don't look like that. Like I'm not going to do well on stage or I don't look like that. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to, to do well. Like, should I pull out of the show or should I just like take my time and work longer? Like, but you just have to, you just have to, mentally be in a good spot. And I, I feel like writing helps a lot too. write, write things down, write everything down. Like don't write it in your notes on your phone, like physically grab a pen and a piece of paper and write it down. You're, you're going to feel so much better about it. If you are writing your goals out and what you want to do and your plans for the day, the week, the month, the year, whatever, whatever it may be, however far you want to plan it out. But I, I'm really big on writing and planning and having set goals and just being organized being organized makes it so so much easier especially with the mental thing if you're not organized then it just goes it it goes crazy you know what I mean um another mental part of it I guess as far like body wise um don't focus I would say don't focus too much on don't focus too much on the scale don't focus too much on what you're body looks like day in, day out. You're always going to have fluctuations. You're always going to have some sort of water weight. Something's going to happen. As far as women, we obviously have menstrual cycles and you get bloated and things happen. You just have to find ways to tweak it and figure out what's going to work for your body or ask your coach. If you have a coach, they're, they're going to help you. That's what you pay them for. Like ask them, ask them to help you. Don't be, don't ever be afraid to ask somebody for help. Like everyone needs it at some point. I still, to this day, like I still reach out to friends and ask other, other coaches or other competitors for help on certain things, because I just get so mentally wrapped up in a certain image or in my own head that you sometimes need that outside opinion because you look at yourself all the time, every day, you know? So you don't have, you can't, you can't judge yourself or have a good, a good perception on what, you're seeing and what you're doing if you don't ask for help or if you don't ask for a second opinion. And that's going to help your mental a lot too, is hearing it from somebody else or hearing what maybe you need to fix or what maybe you need to, that you need help on. Like it helps tremendously. You're, you're not as stressed. You let somebody kind of like take, take some of that stress off of you. So you know that you're doing what you need to do for yourself and take time off, take a break. If you need to take a break, take a break. Cause it gets overwhelming. It does. It gets to the point where you, I mean, I got to a point where I didn't know if I even wanted to do it anymore. Like I was like, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Like it's too much. And then it's, it's one of those things. Like, I hate to say this because everybody could do it, but at the same time, not everybody can do it. You know, not everybody has that, that mental willpower to 
get up and still do things that they that they don't want to do. They have to be told to do it and you just have to be able to function and still do what you need to do without being told, without being forced. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, that's what separates, yeah, the general public from the bodybuilders and what adds even more for me and just like, how, how do these people do it? But I mean, if someone were to walk up to you and say, you know, Diana, we made the decision, you can change one thing about the sport of bodybuilding and everyone would go along with it. What would be one thing that you would like to see changed? Um, one thing that I would like to see change about bodybuilding um, I would, I would want to change the, let's see, how do I want to put this? Um, I would want to change the false information that's put out a lot. Um, not only about bodybuilding, but just about health and wellness in general. There's a lot of false information. Um, I would want to change that, but about the sport in general, um, I would probably want to change I'm trying to think because I love everything about it so much. Um, <laughs> I would probably want to change uh, definitely the expectations of it. Um, I feel like people come in with such such high, like I guess high anxiety and just high expectations for themselves and for everybody else around them to um, to obviously be the best of the best, and that's not always going to be the case. Um, I definitely would change. I would change coaching. Uh, there's good coaches and there's bad coaches. There's a, I sad to say, but there's a lot more bad coaches than there are good. Um, so when it comes to coaching, like pick, pick wisely when it comes to that. So you're not wasting your money. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, with, we've heard plenty of horror stories with coaches too. So yeah, that's a whole, that's yeah. a whole different podcast in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, if we were to talk to you a year from today, where would you like to be at in your bodybuilding journey? Where would you like to be at in just your overall life? What are some goals that you would like to have achieved if we were to talk to you a year from today? A year from today, I would like to have my pro card. We're trying to go for the pro card this year. So hopefully that happens. Got to get qualified first. So <laughs> so hopefully that happens here in a couple months. Um, so definitely pro card. Um, I've written that down numerous times, manifested my goals. Uh, I definitely want to do that. I definitely want to increase clientele as far as um, who who I'm training and who I'm coaching. Um, I have I still have some clients down in Florida, but since I moved, got to get my clients up here too. So definitely want to do that. And I just I just want to grow in the sport in general. Even if I don't get my pro card this year, it's still something that I'm I'm going to do and I'm going to work towards. So that's. That's probably my main goal right now as far as bodybuilding, um, family, and home-wise. I, I, I'm done with kids. <laughs> no more kids. So definitely definitely done with that. Uh, I, I've, I've got all my kids. We're good. So it's just more at this point, um, now that I've came into a little bit more of who I am as a person, now it's just it's it's really just all growth from here. Personal growth, physical growth, just anything that's going to help me grow surround myself with positive people, like-minded people. That doesn't mean that I won't talk to certain people just because they aren't bodybuilders or because they don't work out. You know what I mean? Like that's, I, I'm not, I'm not a shallow person. I'm not going to be like, Hmm, you don't work out. So it, it, it's really just about, uh, surrounding myself in, in positive situations and just staying as optimistic as possible about life in general. So no, that, and that, that is, yeah, that is a great goal to have. And is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Um, Shawnee Jacobs, my best friend. She just got her pro card at the Olympia Amateur. So she's doing a bunch of shows here coming up so she can go ahead and get qualified for the actual Olympia in October. So definitely love her. And I thank her a lot for my for my personal journey as well. She's helped me tremendously not only with the physical aspect of it, it with just bodybuilding in general but just in in life aspects as well like she she's helped me tremendously and i love that woman so <laughs> well i'll have to give her a message and see if she wants to come on the podcast too because that that sounds amazing Oh, she definitely would she would oh, love it yeah that's awesome i'll send her a message then and uh lastly is there anything else that you'd like to say before we wrap it up 
Um, I don't think so. All right. well, <laughs> hey, you know, yeah, you never know. I've had people that have given like 10 minute long spiels at the end. So I was like, okay, I'm a, good thing I got that out of them. Cause I, you know, you don't want to leave people with gas in their tank a little bit still, but yeah, right. that's, that's awesome. And again, you guys go and give her a follow. I'll leave a link to her Instagram page down below. Buyer beware. You will get inspired to, you know, work out and, you know, get off that couch and stop eating those Twinkies. But again, you know, Diana, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and, you know, talking yeah. with us. And I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Well, again, you guys, this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone.